Welcome to our Parent Academy Technology Training. My name is Megan McBain and I'm a Training and Development Specialist here in Detroit Public Schools Community District. And today I'm going to show you how you can troubleshoot your Connected Futures device so that you can support your students during our online learning. Today we are going to cover Microsoft Teams, how to switch our cameras, how to get into our calendars, how we can connect to our cellular networks and even use our internet services. So let's get started today with our session. When students are ready to begin their day, they'll grab their connected future devices. This is a tablet laptop, Windows 10 operating system, and students will click on the power button located at the top of the screen. They'll press and hold. It'll be a black screen with a white Intel that shows up for when they power their devices on. So I'm gonna go ahead and power up my device so that we can walk through where to go next. So once we've logged in to our Connected Futures device, we are gonna look for the clever icon that's located on the desktop. It's gonna be a white C and a blue box and say clever on it, and we're gonna click on that. And Clever is our one-stop shop for students to access all virtual tools that they need from the district. If students are not using their Connected Futures device, then they can open up a Chrome browser and go to clever.com. Once we're in Clever, we're gonna click on the Sign In as a Student button, which is blue with white letters located in the top right corner. And when they click on that, they're gonna get a screen that says Log In, Search for Your School. So you're gonna now begin to type in your student's school here. And if your student's school doesn't populate right away, then you can start typing in Detroit at the end and it will pop up. Once you've selected a school, it'll say Detroit Public Schools Community District up at the top, and you'll have a screen that says log in with Active Directory. It's the very first icon. It has four squares with uh, different colors to indicate that this is the correct sign in. So we're gonna click on Active Directory. So now students are gonna be brought to a screen that says sign in. Students will use their student ID numbers at thedps.org. Student ID numbers are gonna stay with students their entire school career so they can always use this. If students don't know their student ID number, you can reach out to your student's teacher or you can call the school and we'll even provide you with information that you can reach out to district staff to provide the student number for you. Student usernames are going to be anywhere from 5 to 11 digits. Students can go ahead and type in those numbers because it'll be a student ID number. There will be no letters here. So students will type in their student numbers. Students will now be brought to this screen where they will see their student username at the top and it'll say enter password. So students are now going to type in where it says password. Click and type in their student passwords. Student passwords are a combination of letters and numbers, and it is case sensitive, so that's super important. Student passwords are gonna be the first initial of your first name, uppercase, first letter of your last name, lowercase, two-digit birth month, two-digit birth year, zero one for male and zero two for female. We ask that students do not reset their passwords. This makes it difficult for families and district staff to help them troubleshoot those passwords. If for whatever reason you're having any issues logging into Clever, you can always email us at info.clever at DetroitK12.org or you can reach out to your student's teacher and ask them for assistance. Or you can contact our service desk at 313-576-0100. So once students have entered in their password, they're gonna go ahead and click on sign in. Once students log into Clever, they'll be brought to a Clever landing page. The Clever landing pages may look different from school to school or based on grades, since specific apps are available to only certain students based on their school, grade levels, such as maybe seeing iReady or Khan Academy. If students are having any problems logging into Clever, they have a couple of options. First, always check your student's ID number. Sometimes students will match O's and zeros incorrectly or haven't added the with at the DPS or forget the dot for the dot org. Also, double check your student's password. Again, these are case sensitive passwords, so you really need to make sure that it's an upper and a lowercase letter. When using your Connected Futures device, located on the left side of the keyboard, there's a caps button 
This is your cap lock, which means all of your letters will be completely capitalized the whole time. You can tell your cap lock is on by looking at the A in the box in the top right corner of the keyboard. If there's a green light, that means all of your caps are gonna be on. And we wanna make sure that our cap lock is off, so if we click on caps again, the green light will go away, and that's really important since all of our passwords are case sensitive. If students have previously entered in their password and have saved their password here in Chrome, then that also may be one of the reasons why. So you always wanna double check that password and make sure that either you have saved it or that you have it, that may be a problem. Again, if you continue to have any issues logging into Clever, you can reach out to us here in the district. So now that we're here in Clever, we're gonna scroll down and look for our virtual learning tools and we're gonna look for Microsoft Teams. So now that students have clicked on the Microsoft Teams application, Microsoft Teams is gonna open up directly on their screens. And located on the left-handed side of the screen, there are a bunch of icons. And these icons are gonna allow you to navigate from space to space here in the Microsoft Teams platform. So we're gonna go through each one of those spaces just so that you understand a little bit about the navigation. The first one is activity. Activity allows you to see all of the notifications that your student has received from any of their classes, meetings, or their calendars. So once you get into Teams, clicking on that activity bell at the top really allows you to see all of the notifications so that your student doesn't miss anything. The next icon is Chat, and Chat allows students to communicate and collaborate with their teacher and their peers so that they can communicate and ask questions if they need any help. When you click on the Microsoft Teams tile over on the left-handed side, you're gonna see a unique tile for each one of your students' classes. This should reflect their PowerSchool schedule. So I see I have an icon here for my homeroom, for math, language arts, chemistry, art, and PE. The next one is a backpack. It says assignments. This is where students can see all the assignments that they have been assigned from their classes. So let's discuss a very important place in Microsoft Teams, the calendar. And we're gonna click on that calendar icon located on the left-hand side of the screen. This is really important because it'll allow students to see their schedules reflected in their virtual meetings for instruction. Let's get started by selecting that calendar icon located on the left side of the screen. And we can take a look at a student's view for the whole week or even by the day. When students access their calendars, they'll see all of these different boxes that represent different meetings. When students want to enter a meeting, they can just go ahead and click on one. So by clicking on this, I'm going to join my math class. Once I've opened the particular meeting, I can see the join button in the top right corner and it's all in purple. So I can join the meeting with my teacher. When students are looking at their calendars, they may sometimes see a line or a canceled event showing up here on their calendar. Students can remove this from their calendars by either clicking on the calendar and clicking delete, or they can right click on the calendar invite and click remove from calendar. If students happen to see a canceled event here on their calendar, I've got one here highlighted that says canceled writing class with Ms. Lockett. If students happen to see that, they can right click on that calendar event and click remove from calendar. Or students can click on the actual invitation and click on the remove calendar in the top left corner. This will help keep student calendars clean and current with all their events. Our connected future devices have two cameras, one on the rear facing side and the other one on the front facing side of the screen. By default, Microsoft Teams picks up the rear facing camera and that's always activated. For the best meeting experience for students, we want them to switch their camera to the front facing camera so that they can be seen. Students are not required to have their cameras on during instruction, even though it's always really nice to see their smiling faces. When students go to join a meeting, you'll see this screen here that says that they're connecting. And anytime a student has their video camera in purple or their mic in purple like this, this means they're gonna join their meeting with the live camera and their mics ready to go. Notice that the screen has a backward facing camera view so that you can see everything in front of my laptop and not myself. So we're gonna switch that. If I'm using the online version of Teams, I wanna look for the little gear that says devices. 
And if I'm using the desktop application of Microsoft Teams, then I want to click on the gear that says PC, mic, and speakers. So anytime students click on that gear for either PC settings and mic and speakers, or if they click on devices, that settings gear is going to open up a device settings that'll bring up a panel over on the right-handed side. It'll say device settings up at the top, it'll have speaker and microphone, and we're looking for the camera, which is located at the very bottom. When you look at the camera, you're going to see a drop-down menu. And by clicking that, we want to make sure that our camera is showing the front camera and not the rear. So by clicking on that drop-down arrow, we want to look for the UNI cam front and click on that so that now our teacher can see our faces here in the front. So now we'll see our faces and we can now click on the join button so that we can show our faces in class. If students happen to be in a meeting during this time and they need to switch their cameras, they can always click on either the switching camera, which is the picture here on the left, or they can click on the three dots on their Microsoft Teams meeting toolbar. Click on those three dots and we're going to click on that setting that says show device settings. So we can always access those settings in the middle of a meeting if we need to. Another thing is sometimes students may say that they can't hear anybody. So located in the bottom right corner, there's a speaker so students can tell if their speakers are on. But also on our connected future devices, if you click on the FN button and F9, F10, or F11, you can actually turn the volume up or down. So sometimes students don't even know that they've turned the volume down on their speaker and they say that they can't hear anybody. So always check that the volume is up on your speaker when students join their meeting so that they can be heard and also hear their teacher. Anytime you're having any issues with your Connected Futures device, there is always support here in the district to help you. The district has partnered with a social enterprise nonprofit, Human IT, to support you with any technical issues with your Connected Futures device. This may be help in navigating the services or even working on the hardware. So families should really take advantage of this service so that they can get any support that they need. If families are experiencing any kind of technical issues with their device, need support, they should feel free to reach out to the Human IT and they'll be able to help them troubleshoot these devices. There's two ways to reach out to Human IT. First, you can text HELP in all caps for CF to 562-372-6925. And you can text them the problem that you're having. Or you can fill out the web form at HELP for CF in all caps dot org. And those office hours are going to be available between 11.30 and 7.30. And those hours may change depending on the day or the week. What type of assistance can be provided from the Help IT? This can be anything such as internet issues or connectivity, logging into Clever, logging into Teams, your camera's not working, the microphone doesn't work, a factory reset, or if the device is completely defective or if something breaks, you can also reach out to Human IT. So who should reach out to Human IT services? Families should feel free to reach out anytime that they have any problems. But we ask that parents call instead of students so that they can get the support that they need to troubleshoot and work through those issues. So if students are having any problems with their Connected Futures device, families should feel free to reach out to Human IT. They can do that by texting HELP for CF to 562-372-6925. And by texting them, you're going to put your name into a queue and so someone can reach out and call you to support you with the issue. So you'll just text your information here and then a real person will give you a call and help you with that troubleshooting. You can also fill out a web form at help4cf.org. So let's recap on the Help IT service. Who should contact Human IT? Families should reach out to Human IT if they're having any issues with their hardware on their Connected Futures devices. If they're also having any issues logging in, they should feel free to text the Human IT number. Families can also reach out by using and entering that web form or they can always visit us at DetroitK12.org backslash Connected Futures. And this is a great resource to find this information if you ever lose it or any new future information that's going to be populated on this site. Now that we've talked about our online platforms, camera settings, and basic troubleshooting, let's look at steps to troubleshoot our internet connectivity. When using our Connected Future devices, we have Teen Mobile LTE 
cell service. Families have six months of free service. Families should feel free to use that six months of free service, but after that six months, families will need to connect to their home network or pay for their current teen mobile services. For more information on this, please visit DetroitK12.org backslash connected futures. The district has selected the LTE because it has the strongest coverage here in Detroit. While LTE is a great option for internet service, it still doesn't mean that it should replace your home network. So why is my LTE service affected? Here are some of the ways or reasons why your LTE service may be affected. Depending on the construction of your home, it may have brick and mortar that may not allow the LTE signal to have the best service. This is very similar to your cell phone service that you may get at home. Your geographical location may also not receive the LTE data. The benefits though of using your home internet over the LTE is that there is stable connectivity, it's not dependent on the structure of your home, and speeds may be slow depending on how your data is being used. So how can we maintain those LTE device speeds if that's what we're using? You can minimize your data by exiting out of your unused web browsers. You can make sure that you have more than one bar of service and maximize your data to the best of your ability by removing any of the videos that you have being played in the background. So how do I know what I'm connected to or how do I connect to something new? We're gonna take a look at that now. When I'm on the desktop of my Connected Futures device, in the bottom right corner, there's going to be a row of bars. By selecting these bars, I'll see a list of options available to me. By selecting the bars located in the bottom right corner, you'll get a list of networks that pop up for you. At the very top is the T-Mobile LTE network, and it says connected. So this is how I can tell I'm connected. Below are a list of networks that I can connect to. This may be public Wi-Fi or even your home network. To connect to one, go ahead and click on it and enter in the password. If you are not using a connected futures device and connecting to the T-Mobile LTE or your home network, then you may be using a loaner device from one of our schools. You will receive a T-Mobile hotspot. A hotspot is a small portable network that you can connect devices to to gain internet access. To turn on your hotspot, you're going to click on the power button, which is on the front of the device. When you press and hold the power button, you will see a welcome show up on the display. This will let you know that you're turning it on. When you need to turn it off, you can press and hold the power button and you'll see goodbye to let you know that the device is turned off. Once the device is on, families can cycle through a navigation key, which will display the home screen, data use, Wi-Fi name, password, and a web address, and cycle you back to the home screen again. Again, if you are having any issues with your LTE service, device, or need access to a low-cost internet options, we can assist you with that. To do that, you can contact the Human IT by texting HELP4CF to 562 372 or you can fill out the web form at help4cf.org. These hours are Monday through Friday from 1130 to 730. Thank you so much for joining me today and taking time to learn about our district technology. There is support always available to you, and so here are the following ways that you can reach out and gain that support.